it, it kind of unlocked like a, a hidden passion. Yeah. And I had that like knowledge from speech, how I, I used to do like acting and things through speech. And it kind of allowed me to have that outlet yeah. again. So I kind of just kept doing it. And you know, networking is a huge part of it. What's up, family? Welcome to LinkedIn. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe and hit the like button. I uh, can't wait to just continue to grow with you guys. But today, we got a special treat. We got a special treat, man. Um, I got a what I like to call an old homie. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. Got an old homie. yeah <laughs> I called real. that. Uh, I got an old homie <laughs> that uh, you know we've done some done some life together. We've 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 grown, and it's just awesome to to just see her do what she's doing uh host on the highly successful podcast teachers off duty uh five star podcast about like 1.4 thousand ratings uh she's got 5.5 million followers on tiktok she's got 107,000 followers on instagram and then 1.22 million subscribers on youtube please welcome the amazing and one of the most multi-talented people i've ever met <laughs> miss lauren woolley Thank you. I feel like you made me like you hyped me up too much. I'm sorry about it. It's so just... now I'm like, I can't disappoint. Oh, no, you <laughs> I've set it up beautifully for you. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. So Excited like it's it's so funny. Do you remember how we met? Yeah, it was working at the mall. At the mall. <laughs> Yo, the worst place. Oh my gosh, I tell stories about working at the mall all the time. All it's, the Black Fridays. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so me and um Ivan, you remember Ivan? Yeah, Ivan? yeah. So we were just talking about this. Me, him, and then Stephen Wheaton. Okay. They both go to church here. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah, so um, I'm the worship pastor here and over like young adults and media. So like they're all on my team. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about how just awful it was to work. <laughs> No shade to Hollister. Don't don't sue anybody. Uh, but like it was weird. Because I mean, no shade to Hollister now. Now Hollister back then can have all the shade. <laughs> Absolutely. Like <laughs> they had us basically in like some wild. Like I was dusting a roof at one point. It was so bad. Like <laughs> I okay. There's this uh, like you have to watch it. I don't know if it's on Netflix or where it is, but there is a whole like Abercrombie brand documentary out and I watched it like with my husband because I like he used to work at H&M yeah and it was the same time that I was at Hollister uh. and so we watched this documentary and I was like oh my gosh I remember all of these things I didn't I'm like that was like that I didn't realize how bad it was but like so many restricting rules and things like that. I remember like I would get my nails done because I used to compete in speech and you had to be like pretty well groomed and like just professional. Yeah. So I would get my nails done to make sure that they were done. And I remember going to work the one day and the the manager at the time was like, the regional manager is coming. You have to take that off right now. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? I am not taking off my nails. <laughs> like, So I was like, she like hid me in the back room while the manager was there so that I wouldn't get them in trouble it's wild times it was. like so even the so the nails story is funny i remember they wanted the guys to wear like the thong um <laughs> flip-flops is that the right way to say that thong or tong tong don't care <laughs> uh, like, i was like where are you going with this sorry guys <laughs> i i realized where it was going was a dark place uh but like they wanted us to wear them and i just was like no yeah, I'm not wearing those. They were like, "Oh, well, you like your feet." I, was like, I don't want my feet to be out. Do you know how many tables are out at this place? <laughs> you stub your toe on this random uh, setup. I'm like, how nah, uncomfortable nah. that would be to work in for eight <laughs> hours. Um, what if I'm so let's to... transition. You have like absolutely flourished in your role now. So tell us uh, about what you're doing now. Um, so I'm I'm still currently a teacher. That was obviously where my starting point was. Um, I teach elementary school, uh, fifth grade right now. Currently, I've also taught second grade. Um, but right now it's kind of like, you know, although teaching is my full-time job, I also have an additional full-time job, which is all social media stuff. So, um, it actually got started from, um, like right before COVID hit, okay. um, in February of 2020, it was kind of like when TikTok first like blew up and everyone was watching hours of TikTok. We had nothing to do. We had nothing to do. And, um... I had a student who was having a lot of issues like behaving in my co-teacher's class. So he would come to my room and be fine. And then he would go next door and just like cause mass chaos. 
So I was talking to him the one day when he was in the principal's office and I was just trying to like get to know him a little bit more and like see what he liked to do and stuff. And he mentioned that he liked to make TikToks with his sister. And at the time I'm like, what the heck is a TikTok? I've never heard of that. So I like started watching a lot of videos and just like, you know, being a zombie like everyone else was sitting there for hours. And then I like started a bet with him that he couldn't get more followers than I could by the end of the school year. That's genius. And it was like, I kind of tried to play it as an incentive. So like, I was like, we'll keep having this bet and keep going as long as you keep it together. Because if you don't, I'm gonna stop. And then we don't get to do it anymore. And so then like a week later after I started making videos, that's when everyone, everyone got shut down and we all got sent home. Yeah. So um, we had like Zoom classes and stuff. And once a week when we would meet for our Zoom class, he would come to class just to see what my follower count was. Because at the time, I didn't let any of my like students follow me. Absolutely. If, I, if they found me, I'd block them. Because <laughs> <laughs> there were a couple that did. They were like, I found your TikTok. I'm like, I don't know. You didn't. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, so I started doing that. And then by the end of the year, I like we had our last Zoom class. And I had gotten like 16,000 followers by that time. Mm, wow. And he had like 8,000. Like, so Wait a minute. I like, yeah. So I, I kind of, I won the bet and then I just didn't stop. And I, I kept going and I met a lot of really cool educators across the country and it just kind of all snowballed from there. And yeah. I just kind of like, it, it kind of unlocked like a, a hidden passion. Yeah. And I had that like knowledge from speech, how I, I used to do like acting and things through speech. And it kind of allowed me to have that outlet yeah. again so i kind of just kept doing it and you know networking is a huge part of it and it just took off <laughs> no that's that's awesome it's i love how your you know your preparation has kind of come to fruition you know like you said would be in the speech and debate mm -hmm. and then even teaching like you said it unlocked a passion um something that i talk about with like our young adults and um, our team here, mm -hmm. I talk about being a student of the game. Yeah. So like being a student of whatever your craft is, mm -hmm. everybody has to learn something. If you're a musician, you're learning how to play this, how to play in this genre. Yeah. How has your journey um, evolved as you learn more and becoming a, a better student of the game? Oh, I'm, I'm still learning so many things. <laughs> there like were times starting out that I look back at and I kind of just like am embarrassed by or laugh at myself because of the stupid stuff that yes. I used to do. And like when I even when I first got started, like not even knowing how to use the app itself, Straight like I, I would film in the app and then like there would be different trends going on and I'd see people like filming, but they weren't touching the phone. They had their hands completely free. I'm like, how are they doing this? It's a sorcery. This sorcery. And then <laughs> I... I learned that there was a timer on the app because I was, you know, dumb and didn't know that. So for a few videos, <laughs> yeah, for a few videos like that were trending, there was this one that was like the it was like the sexy back challenge. Oh, and you would like put pictures on a, on the screen of like different TV characters from a show that you thought were like hot, mm -hmm. and you'd like you're like go ahead get going with it and like dancing in the background. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. So I'm just going to hold the camera here and go like, ah. and so I'm like holding the camera and I just look weird doing it. But like, you have to laugh at yourself at your, in your beginning stages because you're not going to know everything. Yeah. And even, um, getting into like working with brands, mm -hmm. <laughs> the first ever brand deal I did was it, when I hit, um, it was around 250,000 followers and I worked with like some kind of fitness or like you know, nutrition app or whatever. And they were like, we're going to give you $250 for three TikToks. And I was like, you're going to give me a whole $250 for three videos? You sure. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, deal, you got me. And then now, like, where I'm at with my, like, with my kind of background and with my follower count and stuff, like, it all takes, you know, account into, like, yeah. how much you make off of it. And now I look at that and I'm like, they played you, girl. Like they are, they they were like, we got her. She doesn't even know. <laughs> like two fifty. Thank you, Lord. Right, right. I mean, hey, I wasn't gonna be greedy. So hey. you know, as a teacher, two fifty is two fifty. Two fifty is two fifty. <laughs> I mean, 
So right. you learn like to know how much you're worth and yeah. to know that your craft is something that's, you know, requires creativity and hard work. And, you know, if you're putting that out there, you should be compensated for such. Absolutely. Um, and then there are so many people that I've met that have taught me something along the way. Like every single person I've met through social media has taught me something in one way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. And like one of my my biggest mentors was, um, his name is Gary Brooks and mm -hmm. he's um, a famous principal. He does like these really hilarious principal videos where he like does this crazy Southern accent and he <laughs> pretends like, you know, people are calling the secretary at the school and his parents complaining and him telling the parent like pretty much like, no, sorry, we're not going to do what you want. Sorry about it. Bye. <laughs> and he like now travels around the country and does um, like speaking engagements and stuff mm. like that. And so um, like I did a speaking engagement, I think was it two years ago for um, the Dallas, was it Dallas or Houston? Um, it was a, a school district in Texas. Mm. They, I did like one of their, their professional development days um, but I was really nervous about that. And so I went to Gary and was like, can you help me like figure out what I'm going to talk about? Sure. But like none of it you learn on your own yeah. ever. And I'm still like, now we're trying to like advance our YouTube and mm -hmm. get started with like long form content and, you know, have that kind of get better views. So now we're trying to learn that. So it's like everything you do is another opportunity to learn something. Yeah. there's so And there's so much like, there's so many people to look at and mm -hmm. it's so many people to like kind of get the game off of them as well. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm finding out is a lot of people don't understand the business side mm -hmm. of things. It's like, like you said, he's like, oh, okay, like we're going to pay you $250 mm -hmm. for three TikToks. You said, yeah, and it's like, that's nothing. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. That's nothing <laughs> compared to so-and-so <laughs> over here getting like paid two grand. Off yeah. Of three. So it, it's, it's so important. The business side, um, Tell me a little bit about how you learned about the business side and the deeper side of it. Um, well, also through Gary. So yeah. I like after I what happened, let me start backwards a little bit. So in 2020, we ended up meeting a, a group of us, a bunch of teachers off mm -hmm. of TikTok. Um, and we, we formed the teacher hype house. And I, I know, it. lame now. But <laughs> But we all like met up in San Francisco and just spent like, you know, five days together. We made content, just like became better friends and just kind of like hung out together and got to know each other. And um, Gary was there, too. And he ended up like getting us all um, hooked up under his agency. Gotcha. So he has like multiple agents. And um, so my original agent, um, his name is Jake Rosen. He was my first agent that I ever worked with. Cool. And he's phenomenal. Absolutely great. He owns his own, you know, agency firm. And, um, and then I just recently moved over to Whaler. Um, yeah. And not anything against Jake. It was just like, you know, I was at that point in my career where you take the next step and mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that means you move on to different people you it's get to good. work with. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of how I got my start into the business side of things, mm -hmm. where I actually had someone who oh, was shit. doing the negotiating for me. Like I would negotiate, um, like when I first had brands reaching out to me, I would try to negotiate myself. Yeah. And the one thing no one tells you is that brands don't take you seriously if you don't have an agent. Absolutely. Um, so I, I even knew a lot of people who would fake being their own agent because the brand would know, like, I can't you know, play this person. Yeah. So, I mean, their goal is to make money off of you. And, you know, some people get a little like bent out of shape about that. They're like, well, I'm just, they just see dollar signs. I'm like, well, yeah, that's, that's the agent. business. Yeah, yeah, that's the business. And yeah. I mean, you kind of have to be okay with people wanting to make money off of your creativity and your talent. Absolutely. If I mean, I, don't, I hate saying talent because I, I don't want to sound like conceited because i'm uh, you know but uber talented <laughs> but, <laughs> you know what i mean but like they're they're making they want to make money off of your presence and mm -hmm. your talent and your creativity so um having an agent was very helpful because they do all the negotiating for you they um you know bring you deals or even sometimes brands will just reach out to me through my email my business email and um i'll send that off to to her and she'll negotiate it for me um, but they, they help you to start earning what you're worth. Yeah. Um, but before that, like you have to be willing to negotiate with brands. You have to know, like, it's okay to ask for what you think you're worth. Mm -hmm. Just 
to be reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> like some people, you know, there's there's a lot of money to be made on social media Absolutely. and there's enough to go around. Yeah. Um, like some people are very gatekeepy about like either brand deals that they've worked with or yeah. agencies or what have you. Um, and you know, I'm more so of the mindset of like, you know, if I'm doing well, I want to help other people do well. Yep. And so if I, you know, know somebody that can help somebody or if I, you know, have this network connection or a lineup and somebody else, you know, is showing that they need that or if I see like, you know, they're ready to go to that next step in their career, yeah. like I'm absolutely going to suggest somebody to them. And like, same with brands. Like there are some people I'll see like a, a deal that they've done and I'll reach out and be like, Hey, I really liked your campaign with so-and-so like, do you mind sharing your contacts? Is that something you're able to do? Yeah. You know, you have to be okay with putting yourself out there and like asking people questions because absolutely. it's the only way you're going to, you know, learn more about the business side of it. Yeah. You, you absolutely have to just, you know, like you have said so eloquently, you got to get out there and you, you got to do it. I think, um, and I know you'll probably be able to attest to this. I think people start off in their head a lot. Mm -hmm. It's like, why would they want to do business with me? I'm, I'm just still like, in that spot. I, like, but it's but it's I don't, okay. Yeah, I don't think that ever gets any easier. I mean, yeah. maybe for some people, I'm just not like that. It's never I, like I still am. Like, why would people want to listen to me? Like, Are you I don't, short. <laughs> I'm just a teacher from Ohio. Yeah, like, I, you know, and that's let's honestly, it's like it's so weird now because it's gotten to the point where like. I get recognized mm. and it's, that's a strange concept because again, I'm just a teacher from Ohio. Yeah. And so like Jordan and I will, like we just went to Disney um, for like a long weekend back in November, just like, cause we needed a break. <laughs> yes. So, yes. so we went to Disney and we were like keeping count of how many times people, cause like my following, the majority of my following is under the age of 17. Mm. So like they'll, like it'll be like kids and they'll you'll just see it like you'll they'll you'll be walking by and they'll really? just go like and they like do one of those like a double take and then they whip out their phone and they're like is she in disney and then they somebody look it up <laughs> they beeline it and yeah so like people like asking to take pictures with you is so <laughs> yeah. it's so weird because I like i i love it don't get me wrong it's it's so nice to meet people that watch my videos yes. but it's a strange concept to me because i'm like i don't see myself as that like notable of a person it's weird it's it's a weird concept yeah. in general so um, it, so not <laughs> not anywhere near <laughs> not anywhere near your level so like but as being somebody's like pastor where they come to church yeah. and they see you all the time you go to target pastor lincoln relax <laughs> yeah you can't go anywhere so mm -hmm. not to sound weird but like the mask I still wear sometimes. Depending on the day. I do at day. the airport. Oh, yeah. yeah, at the airport I will. Um, it I mean, just, like, you know, sometimes I just want to be invisible. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if that doesn't sound weird, but like. No, I love being invisible. Yeah. Like there's time, just, just will tell you, like there's some days where I'm like, I really don't feel like seeing none of y'all. I, I, <laughs> I love you, but. Yeah. Leave Goodbye. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what it is. It's just being in, and like I said, I'm nowhere near in, in the level that you are, but it's like being in any type of light. Any but type to them, of you are. Place. Right. But you are. Yeah. So, and it's the same for like teaching. Yes. If, how many times did you see a teacher growing up outside of school and you were like, <gasps> Mrs. Mrs. Smith? <laughs> yeah. Like, straight up. Yeah. Like, you don't live under your desk? What? What you doing out? Yeah. Like, so it, it is. Like, there yeah. are d plenty of professions that have that kind of and I, effect i think it's so awesome what you're doing and how you're utilizing um the spaces that you utilize so you have your youtube you have your tiktok but each place i go to mm -hmm. it's still the same person so you know how like the we always joke about like oh you got your facebook self and your instagram or your yeah. snapchat self i see you consistently showing up in every space <laughs> and i'm you. just like lauren just killing everybody and, and i love it because it's like the same and like just to point to something simple like the same joy and laugh about something random that mm -hmm. you have on tiktok or instagram is the same one that i'll see with your husband on uh youtube you're like yeah this is who i am and um yeah i hope y'all cool with it that's like one thing i really try to pride myself on mm -hmm. is just being real and being yeah. myself because there's so much fake on the internet like there, there's an ungodly <laughs> amount of fake and 
you know, I know that there are a lot of children that watch my videos, so I want to be a positive role model. And Absolutely. I, I want to be somebody that, you know, they're proud to watch my videos or they look up to. Um, and the same thing with educators. Like, I know there are a lot of teachers that follow me. And I, like, we, we talk about this all the time because, like, it gets to the point where, like, my schedule is so crazy. Mm -hmm. And I you know, I'm still teaching full time in a classroom. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't think I could ever give up teaching. Mm. One, because I love it, but two, because I make teacher content. Yes. Like, why would I make teacher content if I'm not a teacher anymore? Like Absolutely. that's that to me is like, you know, putting up a front. Yes. And teachers are already going through a really hard time. They do not need me if I'm not teaching anymore, they do not need me faking like I understand and sympathize with them, you know? It's wild. So like if I'm gonna make teacher content, I'm still gonna be a teacher. If yeah. I'm gonna, you know, make content with my husband, it's gonna be like how we would really act around each other. You know, I just, oh, babe. I wanna be, yeah, oh, I wanna be myself. And like, yeah. I do the same thing. Like people think that just because you're a teacher, you have to be like, you know, a certain type of person or a certain way or whatever. And like, I share a lot of things about my life openly on the internet. Like yeah. I share that my husband has illnesses and that we, we go to a lot of like rock concerts and like I have tattoos <laughs> and like, the, yeah. you know, kind of breaking down the barrier between being a teacher and so being a human. Good. Yeah. Um, that is, individuality is a big thing to me. Um, I tell people, I jokingly say, and you can attest to this, I am not your grandmother's worship pastor. Like, mm -hmm. I wear J's, <laughs> like, I got an earring, like, all that stuff. Like, who you think you're going to see on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. like, the, like, a white collar or something like that? No. And I think that's important because, like, I grew up in a Roman Catholic church, mm -hmm. and I'm very, like, turned off to religion because of yeah. the way that I, I was raised. And it was not, like, a, you know, a fun environment. It wasn't, like, an inviting place, yeah. like, you know? But I go to, uh, my husband and I attend... um Old North over in Canfield. Nice. Yeah, we go, like, I'm not going to say we go all the time because yeah. I just, you know, I hate to say it, but I just don't have the time. Just come here. I just, oh, okay. Just come but, here. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, when we do go for, like, you know, Christmas, Easter, and, like, occasionally yeah. with his parents and stuff, like, I actually enjoy going there because, Absolutely. like, I, I like the environment and the music is up to date and, like, it just is modernized. So true. I, like I, no, yeah. nothing is worse. I'm sorry, all churches out there. I, I love you guys, but like nothing is worse than going to church and feeling like you're gonna fall asleep because you're listening to like an organ for 30 minutes. Like, can I get a one camera real quick, <laughs> one shot? Let me tell you something. <laughs> this is something that is so funny that you're talking about. So, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm really leaning into just being, like, okay, I'm a so-called not expert but i've been doing it for seven years mm -hmm. this thing so worship pastor media all that stuff mm -hmm. so i'm like i'm gonna talk about it so yeah. when i'm doing it and like people hear me talk about it and like oh you're looking at this song to do or that song like there's a song there was a song called rattle by um elevation worship and it was like a very rock style song and i was like we're gonna try it on sunday morning like guitars everything nice. i was like we're going to see how this goes. I don't even know if our people will receive it. That is still the top favorite song of because this Because I think people want to feel engaged when they come to church. Church like, should they don't... not be endured. Yeah, Enjoy. and that's exactly <laughs> it. That is how I felt growing up and even into my teens and early 20s. Like, yeah. sitting through, like, my mom would ask me to go to Mass with her and sitting through Mass and, like, it was that. It was, I have to endure an hour of Mass. <laughs> I'll make it, morning, but... <laughs> What are like, we doing? It's just, you know, and then you sit there and instead of doing what you're supposed to be doing, you sit there counting the lights above people's heads. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's just not an engaging environment. And that's why I think, well, there are many reasons why yes. a lot of churches are not as popular. But yeah. one of the reasons is the lack of engagement of the audience and the, the generations that are coming through the doors. Mm -hmm. You have to... But, one of the things that, that we, we talk about is like, we have to be where people are. Mm -hmm. We want to meet people where they are. And I love that about our church. It's just like a real place. Mm -hmm. uh, our um, our mission statement is like, we exist to love God and lead people to live a better story. If you can't, how are we going to help you leave a, live a better story if we don't present you with like authentic community and mm -hmm. just like a space to feel safe in? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, but it all stems from, this is who I am. If you don't like who it is, I mean, I hate to break it to you, but I'm going to be this way tomorrow. But mm -hmm. I, I think that it's so awesome 
what you do and you, and you you inject your individuality into it. Uh, like two more things I want to ask you before yeah. I, I let you go. Um, this happens in my in my profession too. Complaining. <laughs> how hard is <laughs> how hard is it not to make content about complaining? Um, I think there's a way to spin it so it's not just complaining, but providing solution. Yes. Because there's a difference between complaining, which I, I equate complaining to venting. And then, you know, if I'm going to vent about something, I want some kind of positive message to has come to out of it. Yeah. It has to go somewhere, mm -hmm. right? So, like, even on the podcast, and I know I'm guilty of this, we complain, obviously. It is it is like a, yeah. it's, it is a very therapeutic environment, like, Talking, set up that way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Talking to other professionals in my field who all are relatable to the same experiences I've been through and just like sit there and complain for a minute. It's it's not bad to complain about something. Yeah. But have some sort of like message you're trying to get across or something. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, we as teachers are constantly under fire yep. for different things that are just happening in education that honestly we have no control over. Yeah. Um, and like the one, of one video I just made that, you know, might come off as complaining, but is a valid issue was, um, the issue of, um, Abby Zwerner. I don't know if you heard about her. She was the teacher that was shot, shot yeah. by her six year, six year old student. Wow. Yeah. So I made a video just kind of saying like, listen, if this wasn't enough, for mm -hmm. you to realize there's an issue. Yep. Here's your wake up call. Like mm -hmm. we need to do something about this. Absolutely. This this is not supposed to be this way. Like teachers should not go to school, students should not go to school, staff should not go to school fearing for their lives yep. because who knows when the next school shooting is going to happen. It's crazy. So, you know, that video I posted and it went viral, got like 2 million views and you know that is one video I can honestly say I was complaining, but it's a valid issue. Like I'm complaining about the lack of gun control yeah, and the lack of, you know, essentially care yeah, for teachers and students and staff lives. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the, the message is clear. Like that should not have happened to Abby. Yeah. What can we do to, to make a positive change and fix this? Yep. For once and for all, like yeah, but I think yeah, there there is gonna be space for complaining, and a lot of people make their content out of I simply compl complaining, yeah, literally. And I don't think that it's necessarily a bad thing because a lot of people can relate to complaining about yes. stuff. Like we all have complaints; we're human. Yeah, so. I, I, but I've never gotten the vibe from you of like this is just a complaining person. I've always just like enjoyed your content for literally. Yeah, she may like complain about something or say or like be like, "All right, y'all," but it's coming from it's almost like a bit. Like, y'all, this is a part of the bit. We're we're joking about this complaint or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I've never ever gotten the sense from you of like, "Dang, she just complain a lot." Because <laughs> there's people, a bunch of people. Some people think that on the podcast, like now and then, like, like I think our podcast has evolved a lot since yeah. its infancy. Like when we first got started, there was a lot of like you know talking about our day and like what goes on and mm -hmm. complaining about this and that and telling stories and things like that. And now it's kind of taken on a, a secondary role of not just telling stories from the classroom, but advocating for people yep. and for teachers. So um, sometimes, I love, oh sorry, no, I didn't, go ahead. I didn't mean to I love the uh, the black educators. Episode. Oh, the, we were so excited to be to awesome. get to do that. Like the, yeah. all three of them are amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, like I that's the probably the best part about doing the podcast is getting to meet new people every single episode. That's awesome. We always have different guests coming on. Um, but yeah, it's like you know sometimes what seems like complaining is you know highlighting awareness of an issue that might not have already been known or an issue that is well known that nothing is being done about. about yep. <laughs> so you know we do that in terms of like. You know, the whole school shooting issue, that's always a constant, like, theme, it seems like, because there's always been one we have to talk about. Yeah. Um, you know, talking about, like, the book banning and, like, the LGBTQ issues that are going on in yeah. different states where students are being targeted for different things. Yeah. So, you know, there there does sometimes become complaints, but they're complaints with a purpose of bringing awareness to an issue that needs addressed. Absolutely. In in so few words. <laughs> um I th I think that we 
churches address things too. And um, it's all about delivery. It's all about, you mm-hmm. know, coming from a space of, of grace as mm-hmm. well. Um, but yeah, I, I think what you're doing is awesome. Um, before I let you go, give me the original obsession of how you got obsessed with li- slime. Where'd that come from? <laughs> uh, everything comes from my students, honestly. Really? Yeah, everything. So like they would all be obsessed with slime. And then I don't even know like where I first, I think I just like, saw TikToks and like I like I'm a very like sensory person like okay. it's I like sense. the ASMR I like yeah. the, like it's just soothing to me so like honestly <laughs> yeah welcome to the ASMR Whisper. podcast welcome. no but honestly like when I would come home from school some days and I'd had a, head- a headache last year I would just like open up some slime and just play with wow. it for a few minutes and it does make you feel better because yeah. you forget about what you were mad about but like the kids love it, and so I, you know, buy slime and bring it into the classroom, and they like to play with it at recess and stuff, and they, it's nice because they all, like, stand around the table together, and they they play with it, and then um, I've gotten to partner with a bunch of different slime companies. I actually am traveling to Austin next weekend to go partner with Peachy Baby slime. slime. Yeah. <laughs> I love so it. So they're, like, they're super hype about it, and... They're even like donating to my school. So like, that's really cool. That's massive. Yeah. So a lot of the things that I do, like, although I do get, you know, paid for the work that I do, Mm -hmm. I also have been able to like get a lot of donations to my classroom and my school um, in various formats, which is always super cool because, you know, we have money for stuff, but doesn't always get spent, you know, where we would like it to be spent. (laughs) So it's nice that I can bring it in those spots. <laughs> yeah, you you bring so much value and um you've brought value to to this podcast and this sit down. I've thoroughly enjoyed you. You are awesome. You are amazing. Yeah. Um and I'm so glad that you have gotten to the point of where you've gotten to, but I'm even more excited for where you're going. Thank you so much. I appreciate. It. I okay. was really excited to have you reach out cuz I was like, "Oh my god, I haven't heard from him in forever." I was like, "Do you remember me?" You're yes, like, if I remember yeah. you. <laughs> I was like Lincoln, yes. Oh my god. But yeah, uh <laughs> thank you so much um for being with us today. Listen guys, make sure that you subscribe and like and we can't wait to kick it with you next time here on LinkedIn.